I want to share something briefly on God's love through us God's love through us we're going to read from the Passion Translation 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 14 to the end for it is Christ's love that fuels our passion and motivates us because we are absolutely convinced that he has given his life for all of us this means all died with him so that those who live should no longer live self-absorbed lives but lives that are poured out for him the one who died for us and now lives again so then from now on we have a new perspective that refuses to evaluate people merely by their outward appearance for that's how we once viewed the anointed one but now no longer do we see him with limited human insight now if anyone is enfolded in Christ he has become an entirely new creation all that is related to the old order has vanished behold everything is fresh and new and God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself and given us the ministry of reconciling others to God in other words it was through the anointed one that God was shepherding the world, not even keeping records of their transgressions. And he has entrusted to us the ministry of opening the door of reconciliation to God. We are ambassadors of the anointed one who carried the message of Christ to the world as though God were tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips. So we tenderly plead with you on Christ's behalf, turn back to God and be reconciled to him. For God has made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us. So that we who did not know righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. What a scripture. Lord, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Jesus coming to die was the final demonstration of God's love for us. The Bible says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. So, Jesus' death for us was the demonstration of God's love. And the way we receive God's love is to receive Jesus, what he did for us. And the way we share God's love is to give the same message to other people. Because that's how they'll be saved. That's how they'll have the gift of eternal life. The scripture we read says, Paul is saying, it is the love of Christ that fuels our passion and that motivates us. It is the love of Christ that compels us in fact, proud to that, he said, if we are beside ourselves, if we are crazy, it is because of God. And if we are sin, it is for our sake. Paul was not a normal human being. No, how can you be a normal human being if you actually understand eternal life and eternal damnation? No, how can you be, if you really understand that people are going to die eternally? They're going to be banished from God's presence. They're going to be eternal fire. And that they don't have to. 
because somebody took that judgment. How can you be normal? Paul said, I have continual sorrow and grief, heaviness in my heart for my brethren, my kinsmen after the flesh. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience is bearing me witness that I'm not pretending. My heart is breaking. I have heaviness. Continual sorrow in my heart. Bible says when Jesus saw them, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without shepherd. It was Ray Bowles that wrote a song. He said, people need the Lord. Look at them. Empty people feel we care. When we see unbelievers, we have no feeling for them. We covet the cars they drive. We covet the money they have. She said, there is something wrong with us, essentially. People that are on their way to hell, that we are supposed to have compassion on, we want to be like them. We feel there is something they have. We want, we've compromised our leadership and we need something from them. There's something wrong. No. There's something wrong. Moses, in Exodus 32, 32, when God said, I'm done with these guys. Moses said, from verse 30, Exodus 30 from verse 30. You people have sinned greatly, but I'll go and see if I can make atonement for you. Then he went to God and said, God, you know, the people have sinned greatly. But, please forgive them, but if you're not, just wipe my name from the book of life. I wish that I myself were a curse from Christ. I should go to hell and they should be saved. Somebody asked that Tell me why we should all be sitting in the same heaven with Paul. Of course, salvation is free. It's by grace. So anybody who believes will be saved. We'll all go to the same heaven. But we'll not all have the same seat. I wish that I myself were accursed. When the spirit of Jesus is working in you, you can't be normal, though. You can, the love of Christ compels us. Constrains us, the King James says. It fuels our passion. Six billion people are going to hell. And we are happy. It's not normal. Or you don't think so. No, it's not normal. Your father dies and you're happy. Your mother dies. You're happy. The doctor tells you that your child is going to die. Then you're happy. It's not normal. It's not normal. There's something wrong. I'm telling you. Is it the same spirit, the same Holy Spirit in Moses who said God should wipe his name from the book of life, he's not going to forgive his people. And Paul, who said he should be a curse and go to hell so that his brethren will be saved. Is it the same Holy Spirit in us? Or is it a different one? But are we supposed to go to the moon to save a soul? That's the sad part. It cost us nothing. Almost nothing. To win a soul. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 22. 
and 23. Joshua chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. You know, Jericho was cursed and condemned to judgment. But there was a woman who believed and did not perish with the rest of Jericho. Her name is Rahab. So the final day that Israel had gone to take the land and to, to destroy the land, Joshua said, go to that woman who believed, who received you. Read it. But Joshua had said unto the two men, the two spies, that went to spy the, to spy the country, go into the hallow's house. You remember the Bible says that by faith, Rahab perished not by faith. We are saved by faith. Rahab believed. So when Jericho perished, he didn't, she didn't perish. But not only her. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, go into the hallow's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she had as you swore unto her. Verse 23. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab. Note, note this. And her father and her mother and her brothers, brethren, and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them outside the camp of Israel. When the spies were leaving, they told him, they, they told Rahab, they said, you just put the, the sign of the blood, a red cloth over your window. When every house is falling, your house will stand. They said, anything in your house is safe, but we cannot guarantee the other guys on the street. How Rahab managed to put his father his mother, his brethren in her house. When you got born again, when you got saved, God was expecting that your father, your mother, your brothers. So Rahab now gets saved, wipe her mouth nicely as if nothing has happened and doesn't tell his father doesn't tell his mother, doesn't tell his brothers, doesn't tell anybody anything. And then they all die and she's happy that she's saved. Who does that? Actually, some of us are siblings are in prison and we don't even care. To go visit her. We are busy. They say the only thing that will make evil to rule is when, when, when good men do nothing right. The problem is not the devil. The problem is us. He said we are the salt of the world. When we lose our savor, he said there's no way the world Now, Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. No, my heart desire is to have another house in Trazaco. My friend has bought Accra. I'm going to buy Infinity. Brethren, my heart desire, my goals, my vision for 2024 
to gain weight, to lose weight, to go to the gym. That's okay. You have to be healthy. But really, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Uh -huh. For I bear them record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, be ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe. We can stop here. They just don't know. They just were ignorant. They didn't know that there was another righteousness. Another way God ascribed righteousness apart from keeping the law. And because they were ignorant, they went about establishing their own righteousness. It's like going to the exam, exam hall and ignoring the question before you and setting your own question and answering it. That's what he's saying. It says they were ignorant of God's righteousness, God's way of ascribing righteousness. And they went about to establish their own righteousness and didn't submit to God's program. They were doing their own thing. And that's what is actually happening. We are even talking about the self righteous who. We are not talking even about the hardened criminal. Yet. We are talking about the good, the, the good, the nice boys, the nice guy. He goes to church. He doesn't chase. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't steal. He's a clean guy. In fact, some of them worship God in their house, houses. I worship God in my house. I worship God in my heart. They're ignorant. How can they believe on whom they have not heard? And how can they hear except there's a preacher? Philip asked the Ethiopian Enoch, do you understand what you are reading? He said, no, how can I understand? And somebody guides me. I remember that fateful day when the Lord asked me to introduce the Holy Ghost to our vice president. And I said, Lord, for your information, the man is a Muslim. If you say I should introduce Jesus to him, maybe that makes sense. And if you say, I should introduce the Holy Ghost to him. How is that? I didn't know the man has been reading the Bible without the Spirit. He just needed somebody to tell him that this is not just a religious book. There's a spirit. The law of the spirit of life. And it is in Christ Jesus. It makes us free from the law of sin and death. When that man died, I couldn't forgive myself. I was in the UK. I'd finished an all night. I'd ministered all night. To say I was tired and sleepy was an understatement. And before I put my, hand on, my head on the pillow, the Lord said, if you don't pray for your finance minister, if you don't pray for him now, he dies now. Some of the people, we may not have another opportunity to preach to them. If there's anything that is urgent, it is so we know. No other thing is urgent. Even not a heart attack. Because if the person dies of heart attack and is born again, though he were dead, yes, shall he live? He's very, he's very fine. 
But if the person is not saved, don't tell me that he will make it to heaven. The Bible doesn't say that. You see, you can get acclimatized to an environment so much that you are totally oblivious to what is happening. Jesus said to the Laodicean church, I suppose, he said, you are not cold, you are not hot. I wish you were cold or hot. Now, it was Reverend Eastwood who explained it better. He said, it's like a lukewarm iron. If the thing is not working, you know it's not working. You leave it. If it's working, you know it's working. It can serve the purpose. But when the iron, you, are, you want to iron a dress and the, the iron is lukewarm, the thing is not cold to, it's not hot to, it's wasting your time. And Jesus said, Oh. We can choose to practice religion. He came to die. So it was not, he wasn't, he wasn't coming to joke. So when some people tried to turn church into something else, he took a whip. And everybody remembered that it was written that the zeal of your house has eaten me up. Listen, if you are in this room and you have no passion or zeal whatsoever, for God's house there is something wrong David said Be because of my affection for the house of God I have laid down of my own proper good about 100 million dollars worth of gold and silver combined he said, of my own proper good. Which means he didn't take it from the state coffers, though he was, he was saying that this is what I sweated and saved for the house of God. You know what? If we decide to feed people here, we can't contain the crowd. If we decide to bus people to church, we can contain the crowd. So that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to stop playing religion and paying lip service. And we have to become real. Are they going to heaven? We have to stop pretending. Are they saved? If no, we must get them saved. And let me say this. You must start praying for every one person in your family to be saved. Because if they are not saved and they die, we we'll only stand behind and say, we hope he made it, we hope he made it, we hope he made it. But it must not be so. And some of you must go back to the hospitals. Because whether you like it or not, people die in the hospital every day. And they are not necessarily born again so we must go back to the hospital pray with them those that will be healed will be healed those that are not even healed instantly at least we know they are saved we have to go back to the prison and give them the gospel we have to go everywhere we have to go to the houses and we must do it now.
the greatest commandment. The great commandment and the great commission, they go together. Love your neighbor as yourself. And Bible says, greater love has no man than this, than a man who will lay down his life for his friend. You see, if you leave this service and you don't do anything immediately, you won't do anything about what you just heard. Because you heard it last Sunday. So if you leave this service right now and you don't take any step immediately, what will happen is that you will come back next Sunday and hear another nice sermon. So you must write an action plan right now. You are planning when you walk out of this door, you are planning what you want to do. You've already marked out some people that you must speak to. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for your lives. There are a lot of scriptures. Maybe we can close with 1 Timothy 1. We'll read from verse 5 all the way through chapter 2, verse 5. Let's go. Now, the end of the commandment, the purpose of the commandment, if there is any commandment in the Bible, the purpose is charity there is from the word carries, you know, grace, love. Love out of a pure heart, a good conscience, and faith without hypocrisy, faith without pretense. From which some having swerved or strayed have turned aside to vain jungling. He says that, look, people don't even know what they are talking about. Um, he said, I'm talking about love, good conscience, and faith. Without pretense. People who have strayed from this, they've given themselves to vain jungling. Empty talk. Wow. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers, manslayers, okay, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, that's homosexuals or sodomites, okay, for men stealers kidnappers for liars for perjured person and if there be anything that is contrary to sound God doctrine he said the law is not for you the law is not for you the law is for the unrighteous you live above it everything that is Contrary to sound doctrine, semicolon, according or in accordance to the glorious gospel of our blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to our trust. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing to them their righteousness. He said, to wit, that is, And he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now we are ambassadors of Christ. The gospel is committed. Go into all the world. Make disciples. Every other thing is secondary. No, this is it. The great commission. And for emphasis, he could say all people, he say any creature, whether they are pygmies, 
whether they don't behave like human beings, they practice cannibalism, every creature. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me. For that he counted me faithful, putting me into ministry. Huh? Look at a person like Manasseh. He too is a pastor. Yeah, that's what Paul is saying. Paul said, he, a person like him, to God has honored him so much and said, you preach the gospel. That's what he did with all of, all of us here. Who was before a blasphemer? Maybe you are not a blasphemer. Maybe you are a chaser. Or you are a master of PVLP. <laughs> Whatever you wear. Or you, you inject yourself. Or you take drugs. Whatever you wear. And look at what he did for us. Look at us. And now he is. But I obtained mercy because I did it in ignorantly don't believe let's finish and the grace of our lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love that is what i'm saying i'm talking about the love of god the love of god look at it the grace of our lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in christ jesus this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom i'm chief let me let me say this Everybody needs this unforgettable encounter called being born again. Some of us, we are not. Because it's an experience when you have, you can't help but talk about it. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me, in me first, Jesus Christ must show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which you hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor, glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit unto you, Timothy, according to the prophecies which were on before on thee, that thou might, by them mightest wage a good warfare. It was as if, w w when Paul was writing this, it was as if he was talking to Water Garden. Look at the prophecies we've received. We, we did. We should take over the world. What are you talking about? We church, we church, we church, we church prays 12 hours, seven days. And once every month, nine hours. Which church does that? Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Of whom is planting church in every community in the world? Which church has this mandate? Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Look at that. I exhort therefore, that first of all, prayer and supplication. Because see, you can't be committing everybody to Satan. So, that is why he said we should pray for everybody. I exhort therefore, that first of all, say first of all, Supplications, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks be made for all men. What's the purpose? We'll find out. For kings and for all who are in authority or people in prominence. That's what it means. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. What is good and acceptable of God, in the sight of God? This kind of praying is good and acceptable in the sight of God. Verse 4 says, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there's one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Pastor Richard, it won't cost us a dime to share Christ, to share our salvation with somebody. But it will cost, it cost Jesus everything, his whole life to do this for us and if we truly have the spirit of Christ the fruit of the spirit is love if we have the spirit of God in us we walk in love and greater love has no man than this the greatest love you can show anybody is to bring him to the Lord bow down your heads one minute 
I'm sure God spoke to us. How can they believe on him whom they have not heard? Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how shall they call on him whom they have not heard? And how can they how can they call on him whom they have not believed? And how can they believe on whom they have not heard? And how can they hear except they be a preacher? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to open your heart and speak with yourself and with the Lord. And you may be listening to me and you are not saved. They say it's not rocket science. The Bible says you don't have to, it's not in heaven for you to say, go and say who will go and bring it. And it's not in the abyss. But it is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. It, says, it is, the word is near you. And that's the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with a heart man believe unto righteousness. With a mouth confession is made unto salvation. You are in this service. You have not made Jesus the Lord of your life or you're not sure. We can do that right. We can get it right right now. You are in the service with us online. Or you are watching this broadcast later and you have not made all this all important decision i want you to pray with me the sinner's prayer heavenly father i'm a sinner today i make the decision to surrender my life to you not in my own power to overcome sin but by the grace of god that jesus actually died in my place and give me his life which I receive by confessing Jesus as my Lord and receiving into my heart as my personal Savior today I am saved because I've done this thank you father thank you father in Jesus name amen